All right. So this is it. We need your support to keep going and we kind of need it right now. Hi, I'm Michael. And I'm Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and together we are Painting Buddha. Today, exactly two years ago, we launched our award-winning first product, Season 1.1 Target Identified. For the last two years, we have been working hard to bring you the best miniature painting tutorials available anywhere. We have released beautiful DVD sets, awesome collector's boxes, and with the Painting Buddha Academy, created an extensive video tutorial library at an insanely low price. With your support, we have become one of the biggest global miniature painting communities online. Our goal is simple. We are here to help you to be a better painter. And today we want to say thank you for your support. We could not have done it without you. For over 25 years now, the miniature gaming and painting community has held a very special place in my heart. Painting Buddha is basically me living my lifelong dream to give back to the awesome community that means so much to all of us. I have invested a significant amount of funds towards the realization of this dream and as promised I will continue to do so and draw zero salary. Believe me when I say that it took a lot of hard work and sacrifice to get where we are today. We have achieved a lot in the last two years and still have big plans. There is just one thing we sadly haven't achieved yet and that is financial stability. And while we are grateful for all the support we receive, it seems that our business model is no longer sustainable. And that is why we are going to change it today. The success of our free videos on YouTube is amazing. We had over 42,000 views last week alone. Hundreds of messages, mails and comments seem to indicate that you really like what we produce. So here is what we're going to do. You want free videos? Okay, you'll get free videos right here on YouTube. All we ask for is that you consider funding us through Patreon. Patreon is a platform that helps to support content creators like us on YouTube. With Patreon, you can support us starting at as little as $1 per month. And the good thing is that Patreon lets you limit your pledge so that you have full control over how much you spend. Perks included, no strings attached. To celebrate and finance, and finance the Patreon launch, we are running a special Patreon super sale at paintingbuddha.com. Save up to 33% on our entire range while supplies last. So this is it. We need your support to keep going and we kind of need it right now. So please help us help you be a better painter. Share and enjoy. Welcome to uh, the next Age of Sigma video from Painting Buddha. This time we have a special guest in the studio and I'm very happy that he's here today to film with me. Uh, Jack Crow. Hello. Yay. Hey. <laughs> How you doing? Very good. So I think you're uh, uh, at least as excited as I am to be here. Um, to Possibly yeah. more so. <laughs> yeah. Possibly more so. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it, I think that's uh, it's a really fantastic idea that you will be here filming with me so we have a different impact on the questions uh, because we guys are really used to, to do the videos by now. So it's really good to get like a neutral view on, on my painting as well. Mm. We would like to thank you, first of all, for the massive support that we, uh, we had and uh, people keep sharing and uh, it's quite amazing actually to see uh, the views go up uh, with the Age of Sigma video and yeah, thank, thanks for your support. I think we will start with the painting right away. Awesome. And uh, yeah, you can see 
the uh, massive chaos figure that we have here. It's uh, Carlos Cool. Uh, <laughs> I hope I got the name right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, he also he's a uh, companion with uh, by his little uh, nasty looking dog. And I understand he has a backstory that you're going to be telling us about. Uh, yes, sure. Um, in the uh, behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I, uh, yeah, I'm not the the big fluff guy, but most of you know that. Um, so we will focus on what I can do: painting. <laughs> I'm sorry for the guys out there. the The most amount of fluff that I know for these guys is this is a bad guy. Yeah. And the previous video was one of the good guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we will try to to show that by the use of color as well. So uh, also the gold parts here on that figure will be more greenish, a bit more cold. Um, so we have a contrast there. And um, the figure is quite nice. It's amazing for a plastic uh, miniature, actually. They're beautiful. Yeah. They're really beautiful. So, I think for a kit that comes out that, that you just clip off and is ready to go. Yeah. Fantastic. Also, the, the depth actually is quite interesting. Uh, with the different parts you stick together, you achieve quite a nice deep look that would be actually very hard to cast. Um, now, you haven't, you haven't fully glued together everything, yeah. have you? Um, that's true. You can see uh, you can see here the the open uh, join line here, this mm -hmm. the seam line between the the two parts, and I would just take off the arm as well. I just blue tag that in place. Um, we were talking about that off cam earlier um, because we are filming the model here, um, and we really want to show you uh, as much as possible. We still have some parts uh, separate so we can have better brush, brush accessibility and also it's more easy to see on cam. So, something like this, which has such a high amount of detail on you, do you, you, you have like a, a, a real detailed plan before you go into it of how you're going to attack the miniature? Mm -hmm. Good question, I think. Um, first of all, I have quite a good picture in my mind of which colors I will use. Um, here, in this case, we will go uh, for something very close to the original box art, mm -hmm. um, but still with my own twist in there. Um, but yeah, usually I got a good atmosphere picture, so to say, in, in my mind. So something you mentioned off camera was that because of uh, your, your, your painting on camera, so you want to have some of the parts not glued together because yeah. it's easier for you to, to paint and record at the same time. If you were painting this at home, say mm -hmm. just for yourself, would you have put more put more of the miniature together, um, or would you still have gone with this approach? I think I would still have gone with this approach because uh, if you want to paint something in a very high level, it's really important that you have a good brush access. It just makes life a lot easier if mm -hmm. you, for example, that's what we will paint first: is that uh, soft skin tissue area here and mm -hmm. also the arm. And just imagine you have the front part here. You couldn't have not really reached this all that here. Uh -huh. And as it's not just one color and a wash, you could do that easily. So if you want to do it for gaming, yep. you can put everything together. But yeah, if you're just trying to get it a little bit higher level. So something wise. you mentioned like with the, um, the, the join line of the cape. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I find when I'm painting miniatures, I, I like to have that access where I can get into all the areas. Yeah. But then once something is painted, Sometimes when you stick it together again, there's there's quite an obvious gap. Yeah. Um, is 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 there any advice you could give um, for for combating this? Do you, do you just make sure that everything fits together perfectly beforehand? Oh, or? there are different strategies in that. Um, let me just mix the base color and we continue. To so I'm, uh, I'm 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 doing Riddler mode. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Let's there's gonna there's gonna be a lot of questions. So I, yeah. I apologize. So we just get that base color started here. This is. Um, some uh, red beige from model color uh, with some black and I will use that as a as a base color. There, there are different strategies on um, how, would, how you could actually approach that. Uh, one is that you just uh, glue everything together, uh, not everything together but just place it and uh, fill the gaps with milliput mm -hmm. and then break it off so you have like a, just a very fine line from the milliput. Oh, I see. okay, yeah, that's, that's so, a good one. Yeah, Matt really likes to do it that way um, because th this line you can easily cover with glue afterwards. Ah, okay. Um, if you want to do it very, very fast, you could just simply uh, go for, uh, for PVA glue, actually. 
the Igloo covers even uh, big model, uh, big seam lines quite well. You know, I even have um, uh, painting books from a certain miniature company, which are from like I don't know about five six years ago, I think, and uh, they they give recipes for washes, and they say to put a drop of PVA glue in with the paint because it, oh, really? it helps it settle in the recesses. <laughs> Yeah, the PVA glue is quite interesting because it changes the surface tension quite a, quite a bit, mm. and um, because of the high surface tension, it's also good to fill fill gaps with that. Um, you could do that here. In this case, I will uh, just close it with some milliput afterwards. Uh huh. Um, because it's quite uh, easy to access on the top. Um, if so, so for if if you, this is the first time you're watching one of these painting Buddha videos, what um what brushes do you personally use? Um, I prefer um, Winter Newton Series Seven, the um, long hair ones. There mm -hmm. is also a, a series by Winter and Newton, the Series Seven miniature. The miniature they're slightly shorter, aren't they? Yeah, they're quite nice for free hands. The the short ones because uh, you can. Uh, control what you're doing with the brush quite mm -hmm. a lot better um, but the long ones uh, do give you quite a bit of uh, time actually because you have a lot of uh, a lot of paint and water in the back of the brush mm -hmm. so you can see even here we've been talking and I still have like plenty of paint in there too something I can see on the, the screen now is that you haven't completely loaded the brush all the way up to the top yeah um, which was something I used to do in the very beginning, and I'd get through brushes very quickly. Um, it's, it's just to try and load like halfway, and it will start to fill up a bit, and not to to clog up the whole brush. Yeah, especially when the paint gets to the very back here, the brush to the very end, to the to that silver tip, and the paint dries up there. It's really a problem because that will make the bristles just spread a tiny bit, and, and you don't get that fine point yeah. anymore. And really, uh, the quality of the brushes can be really easily men uh, measured in the quality of the tip and how long it holds the tip. And for this for this miniature, you're using um, Vallejo Model Air. Um, yeah, it's um, actually it's a combination of different colors and the um, the uh, red beige is from Model Color mm -hmm. and um, the my all time favorite uh, one of my all time favorite colors the tank brown is from the model air range. Yep. Um, the black again is model color. Um, there is Games Workshop color on the palette, so I also mix uh, within the uh, the whole world of <laughs> the whole. I'd range be interested to know Vallejo's um, sales figures after these videos because I know probably deep deep sea blue. <laughs> yeah, so it's probably dark, like the dark, sales dark of that blue. has yeah, gone yeah. up. And so, you know, I wonder if tank brown is, is now suddenly going up. <laughs> Yeah, guess so. Yeah, be here in the uh, in the battlefield Berlin, where we uh, where I buy most of my my colors and oh, uh, of course, I'm in mean Berlin, battlefield Berlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they uh, they always tell me that, uh, especially when I'm giving like a painting class, people go like, oh, okay, hey, I need uh, tank brown, dark sea blue. Yep. <laughs> so, ah, okay, you're one of the uh, students, right? <laughs> Something I'm noticing that, that you're doing here is you're you're being extremely neat for the for the base coat. Uh, yeah, I, because I, I guess people are also wondering about that. I'm using black um, black base coat this time. Um, sometimes I'm do, doing black and white. Uh -huh. But one advantage of being neat here and, and when you place the base color is that you can actually keep some of that black borders uh, later on and keep them already as a kind of maximum shadow. And if you would go all the way over with with the skin tone, you would ha wouldn't have that sharp line here. Yeah. So um, I like to to be quite precise on that. Is there any reason why you've gone for an all black primer on this miniature and say is, um, is it for literally that reason that you you can have some nice shadows reserved? Yeah, I can. I, I basically I just skip the the lining process. Uh huh. And uh, which I get is it. so fun. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's fun, but it can be also quite quite boring actually. Because if you have a miniature with you know with a lot of armor plates like that, and mm -hmm. you would have to do the frame uh, frame work on all of those, that would just drive you crazy. So that just saves me some time. Um, plus, I can achieve a very high contrast, especially for non metal. I like to work on uh, on a black surface, on uh, a black underground, because um, 
this way for me it's quite easy i see black is like the darkest spot on the miniature and yep it's just very easy to to watch and judge the contrast from there all right so we have the base color here and it, it's quite nice because we can see the uh, the muscles here quite nice here with the studio light you can see that already mm -hmm. looks a bit like painted highlights on there mm -hmm. um so I will just continue now um, highlighting that area here. I won't even um, like take the base color of the, the skin and paint it all over the model because um, with the wet and wet and loaded brush technique you're just focused on a very small area and you don't actually don't need to do that now. Um, also just uh, skin color parts are just here on the on the back of the model. That here, the main part will be later covered with the front plate. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will leave that blank. I think that's something to mention as well with, with a figure that's that's so detailed as this is to, to really make sure you know which areas need to be painted at, at what point. Because sometimes yeah. um, I've painted I've painted a miniature and I've, I've done one area and then there's that little bit at the back of the head. You're like, oh, damn it, I have yeah, to go yeah, back yeah. and do it again. <laughs> um, and you're at a completely different point. You know, your, your brain's already moved on to the sword, you know. <laughs> so we have some base color in the brush see that it's uh, not all the way to the top of the brush but just more on the front I think the... that's where I've where I've because I've I've tried this loaded brush technique and, yeah. and had very mixed results um okay and you see now I have just I loaded up the brush way too much with the base color okay yeah yeah it's nice to have some some room in there for some water as well so we will place the light here for the highlight and just with the back of the brush a little bit more pressure, get some of that skin tone to flow out and just create a nice little dramatic blending there. So with the with with the um, I mean I know uh, to to say recipes of how thick or thin paint is 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 you know I think a bit foolish because everyone has something slightly differently. Um, yeah, especially because if uh, for uh, like. For me, I have paints that that are laying around for like ten years, and then <laughs> yeah, the, the consistency the consistency changes, changes really with, with with these with the model air. Are you literally just using straight model air for the for the base, and then pure white? The model air you can use it quite directly because it's uh, kind of not really pre diluted, but uh, it's thinner, and mm -hmm. um, I think the pigments are even a bit finer than uh, than. The normal model colors, for example, so um, it's quite quite good to use them just as they are. Uh, the model colors you have to thin them down, uh, especially when they're like laying around for for a while on your desk. Um, you always have to find like a, a good a good and working consistency for you. Um, it's better if you're not sure to work thinner. Um, because that will preserve some of the, the details and you're not smearing paint all over the model. And also if you make mistakes... It can be slightly, I was about to say, it can be slightly safer. Yeah. Like with um, the Randolph model, Michael was, was saying that, that you, you use a lot of glazes on there. Yeah. Um, and, and that it's, it's, it's hard to make a mistake when you're working with glazes. Yeah, plus uh, for, the, for the Randolph, for example, the the nice thing is that he's got like a very realistic skin texture and with glazes you really can work with the with the sculpt rather when you do the blending like that um that covers actually quite a lot of the surface texture from the model mm -hmm. so you want to make sure that you adjust the technique just to to the figure and to also to the look that you want to create uh-huh with glazes, you can get a very nice, realistic weathering look. Whether if you do a blending like that, that will always look like very soft skin like. With the um, with the white that you put on the tip, mm -hmm. as, is is that literally pure white? Or have it's, you thin it's it's pure white, and it's a lot thicker. I was going to say because that looks that looks like quite a thick white. Yeah. Um, here, this is uh, some artist quality acrylic color. Yep. You know, John um, John Harrison recommended to to use Liquitex white yeah. because it's it's so it's thick and it's it's really high body. Um, yeah, when they when they um, changed the um, the the Game Structure paint range, I was uh, looking for another pure white, and I found 
this one here from a German brand called uh, Schminke. Mm-hmm. And Brilliant name, love it. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Sorry, I, don't, I don't know what it means. Brilliant name, absolutely it, love it. It, it. it means makeup. Oh, no way, that's cool. Um, Schminke? Schminke. Yeah. Schminke? Schminke. Schminke, love it. And yeah, the, the nice thing is you can blend it for quite a while, but uh, actually it also works in almost the very same way with the model color titanium white. I was going to say, you, you could do this though with any, pr- yeah. pretty much any white. It, it doesn't have to be that, that paint. So um, when you highlight elements like that, you have to make sure that you still pick out like little elements, uh, like here the the front piece, just mm-hmm. with the stronger highlight. Also here the like around these like nasty little holes, you have to highlight them to make them really uh, stand out. Also, you have to consider that a lot of that will be covered later on. So it's good to have a high contrast there that you actually see that you've painted that in detail. Is is that a face in his flesh? Uh, no. Is that, just, is that just, I think that might just be the way it's playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like reading clouds. It's like, no. No, yeah, that, that's exactly it. Just right now, it, it kind of looks like a face um, with some with some teeth. and. Yeah, but I think that you can see some, some like organic... Um, elements there but not not really sure i think it's not a face you pro- on, on the battlefield you probably wouldn't have time to stop and ask him <laughs> yeah is that a smiley face on is that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right here for for that part um we will also highlight I like it and a little bit as as we did on the uh, on the Zigmar guy, um, we want to try to create a rounder highlight, um, a bit like like on the face mask. Mm-hmm. So we're placing a light color here in the middle. Just a, a quite a round uh, or oval dot, and then we mix a middle tone and. Soft it out to the sides. Okay. Because the nice thing uh, when you do it like that is that, you know, you have the maximum highlight already on the on the miniature, mm-hmm. and just with one or two glazes you can make it blend into the dark color to the sides. Something it took took me a little while to to cotton onto was that I I so say for example just now you 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 place that high point of light on that that muscle that piece of muscle. It it looked quite extreme, but then as it started to dry, because of the translucent nature of acrylic paint, um, yeah. I, I you know as soon as I put it on, I'd freak out and think, oh no, I've ruined the miniature. Where actually, if you just have a bit of patience and realize realize the nature of the paint, it actually works the, yeah. the, the way it dries. Patience is quite an impor- important thing uh, when it comes to miniature painting because you have to wait for some effects. You have to wait, and others uh, you just have to correct them on the go. So you have to know when to stop and. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, that's it. Comes with the the experience, I guess. And soft it out with a clean brush. A clean brush or a lit brush? <laughs> a somewhat clean brush. <laughs> Ah uh, yeah, don't do the brush licking thing. Uh, <laughs> I always, I always now now after watching your videos, I always quote um, Kirill. I, lo- I love the bit in the Highlander video where he just Mike, Michael says, "So Ben always licks his brush. Do you lick this brush?" And he just turns to the camera, "No, it's a myth." Brush licking is a myth. Kirill's comments are really unbeatable. I expect I, after seeing uh, some of his work, I expect it, like with artists, some artists can be quite. Um, the word flamboyant yeah and and how amazing his stuff is is not the person i imagine kirill to be he's very just direct and to the point and there's no there's no flamboyancy about it it's just yeah, yeah. Yep, this yep, yep, done. And you, <laughs> it's very very to the point um to get in a bit uh like a bit more interest in the in the shadows of the that flash 
part I mixed some turquoise in there, model color turquoise and a little bit of um, black and tank brown to get some shadows in there. So I added a bit more blue to just put that here in the shadow area. And is it is it a typical rule that you, you'd go with a cold shadow and a warm, warm mm, light? No, but it just works really nice on uh, if you want to create an undead skin look. Uh, uh -huh. Blue in the shadows really, blue or green really helps to, to make it unhealthy, look right. unhealthy. Okay, for the, um, I think that's already okay. Um, under the armpit, and that that part will be quite covered, so we won't see that. But I will add a bit of tank brown in here, mm -hmm. and blaze that out with the water that I have in the back of the brush. That's that the the way you did that is very similar to uh, Fernando with the random encounter. The way he was using his washes. Um, I I remember the first time that I'd read about a wash. And and it was uh, you. You tend to just soak the miniature in wash, um, and it's literally dripping off it onto the base. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, you know, you you have to be kind of controlled with it, you know, or it's going to go go everywhere. Yeah, we uh, try to just to call the controlled wash uh, a glaze, and if it's just all over the place. It's a wash. Sometimes you need a wash for certain effects. A wash mm -hmm. is, is quite good when you want, for example, to paint a lot of, a lot of rivets. It's, it's good to just give it a wash and then just to highlight from, from that on. Um, Rather than sit there and have to, to yeah, dark yeah, light. Outline it like every, every I, I tried that once. I thought this is how the professionals <laughs> was doing and I went stir crazy. So um, for to, to get this part here a bit more vibrant, the, the inner parts. We will um, mix a bit of the uh, Mephiston Red, uh -huh. the layer color from Games Workshop, and a bit of the um, uh, Tank Brown. And we have that quite thin. I'm showing that on my fingernail. Uh -huh. On the on the silver part of the brush, oh, yeah, it's <laughs> it, or, you know that when you yeah, go to, yeah. you're about to do something really important, like an eye or something. <laughs> and there's that little blob of water. You're like, please don't drop, please don't drop, please don't yeah. drop. Yeah, it's true. It's quite a quite a risky thing. Okay, um, sometimes it's good to just in between um, check with the parts that that will be here later on. What we will see. And you can see, you can just see a very tiny bit of, <laughs> bit of that. Actually, but it, but it's good. It's good for the video to see how to. to yeah, but it's also if you look in here, you can still see it. You know, so mm -hmm. it better be painted. Would Would you say that's that's something to record? Because uh, I've heard advice from someone before saying if you can't see it, don't paint it. If, um, if it's for like a, a tabletop miniature. Yeah, yeah. Whereas on contrast, if it's for like a display figure. For, for a competition, the judge will probably pick it up and look at every possible angle to see that you've that you've done it correctly. Yeah. Well, not that correctly, but that yeah, you've done it. Correctly. I have that with some of my pieces that if you look them from from downwards, for example, you you won't really find the blending or it's very dark down there. The thing is, once you paint for a competition, you really want everything that you could possibly see. Like for example, in here. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's not true that you don't see it. It's just very hard to see. Uh, okay. See, you, you see it. So um, if you have that on a competition, you really want everything to be painted in the highest possible standard. So that's also why all this painting work is not really lost. And also other people might not know, but you'll know. Yeah. That yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if you really <laughs> spend stuff. like uh, spend longer than five minutes with a miniature and just really spend like 10 minutes staring at a model, uh, it would disappoint you actually to find something unpainted. Mm -hmm. I will continue to uh, put base color on the, the upper parts here of the, the flesh. Uh -huh. um, we will here in the end just see the neck the back of the head and part of that muscle here. Um, I think I will just go uh, and quickly do the uh, layer of base color off cam because it's a bit, of, a bit boring maybe for you guys. So we will be back for the highlight parts. And um, yeah, that's it. All right, so um, as you can see, base color uh, on all the flesh parts, very dark in the, in the back and not very precise, but flesh color. This will be totally covered with the cloak later on, so we don't have to really worry about it. We were actually just discussing that, discussing that off, uh, off camera, and um, if you're painting this at home, feel free to leave that area because it won't be seen, but yeah. um, we were saying that, that you'll know. <laughs> yeah. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll just know that it hasn't been done. He's, he's naked under there and he needs some flesh. <laughs> True. Alright, so we will continue in the, ver in the very same way. Um, always keep in mind that the uh, the way you uh, place the highlight or the shape of the highlight should um, be like a smaller version of the shape of the muscle or the, the object. So a round uh, shoulder pad needs a round reflex and an oval muscle like that need an oval reflex. That's a very interesting point. That when you start changing the uh, the the shape of the uh, the reflection of the light on the object that will really be a game changer on your miniature because it's something even a lot of pro painters don't do they right. highlight just from the top very bright just in one straight transition uh -huh. like maybe i can show the uh, the difference just here on the on the thing on the shoulder here so if you would do just a blending from light here to down darker down there, uh, it's a little hard to see. I might might just do it stronger. It's too strong. Quick blend, blend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you have a blending like that, that could also work on a figure, um, but. I will just do the rounder one on the other side. see it works but it's it's not as natural as, as yep. it could look and so I think I have uh, I think I have a couple of miniatures that might look a, a little bit like that <laughs> not sorry not <laughs> not your, your smoothly beautifully uh, um, blended uh, uh, flesh but the, the the very high spot you know yeah and sometimes you have it it just look a bit like um, like I don't know, like like a color chart where you have all that different transitions from a very light to very dark and all in the same angle. People like to do that on blades as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, just keep in mind the direction of the light. So we will fix that uh, quite easy here. Thin base color again over it. Something a, a friend of mine said that, that, eased my, that gave me a bit more confidence when painting is that at the end of the day, it's only paint. Yeah, you know, there's, there's, um, you, you, you can always fix it. Yeah. 
So we were just talking earlier off um, off camera. Um, where 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 did you um, hear about this loaded brush technique? Was uh, who who taught you this in the first place? Um, actually, it's a, it's a funny story. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we uh, kind of it, it happened more or less by by accident. Uh, I was working with a uh, with a dirty brush because I wanted to be ultra fast, and uh, it just happened to be like. Oh, what is that? Hey, that looks interesting. And uh, I thought it would be quite daunting for a lot of people to show that here on for the academy because it's like a crazy technique. You just mix it on 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 on, on the miniature itself mm -hmm. within one brush. And we actually didn't show it on the academy for for quite a while. Um, but then I decided, okay, it's it's always good to show something new and interesting for the people and I was doing the wet and wet blending for, for a bit and we showed the technique here the first time and we thought okay we need to come up with a cool a cool name for it <laughs> and so uh, we came up with a with loaded brush so actually that is a homemade painting Buddha technique <laughs> awesome so let's get some shadow color in there so it's the base color with uh, some tank brown I have to admit to being slightly disappointed to the origin. I was I was kind of hoping you were sitting under a tree and an apple fell on your head. And you just kind of <laughs> think. Um, uh, yeah, it's always good to to admit when you're having uh, good results from your own uh, laziness. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay respect to that. Would you say that since you since you like started doing the loaded brush that that your style of painting changed? Or it just it helped you achieve the same style but quicker. Yeah, I think it just speeded things up for me. Um, it does change the the look a bit because you can achieve very strong uh, highlights with that, like on the the small spot. If you do that manually uh, in in classic techniques, that might take longer and look not as satisfying because you actually can adjust the sharpness of the uh, the highlights that you paint quite quite well. You can blend them in a bit, not blend them in at all, and um, so you can vary on the surface. So it might have uh, also changed the uh, the uh, style of painting. And the good thing about the technique is it really speed things up and you have more time to actually correct things and work until you're really satisfied because when you're faster you can just uh, you just have literally more time on the figure. Mm -hmm. And here for, for for example on that shoulder muscle here, that's a very nice area for a, for a loaded brush and doing it with classic techniques that just might might take a while. And we have a blend. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hate you a little bit. <laughs> we also soft it out while it's still wet a little bit to the other side. And nice. <laughs> okay. Just bring up here the bit of the light down here. If if you guys are listening out there, I I must apologize because I'm a little bit starstruck at the moment because I'm sitting across the desk with Ben Comets. I'm I'm used to watching these videos uh, on a computer screen, so I apologize <laughs> for that. Um, no no need for that. So yeah, just softening out the transition a bit with a glaze of a light mid tone. Would you say that sometimes with um, if you've got like a deep shadow and a and a you know your your point of light that if you're not quite happy with it sometimes a glaze of the mid tone can and just in the middle to see to smooth things out a bit. Um, yeah, the the glaze with the middle tone is uh, it's quite quite a, a, an important thing because you can control the level of uh, of contrast really well with that. Also, actually, how uh, how wide you pull um, the transition, 
mm-hmm. is quite important to depending on what material you want to to recreate. Here the skin is more, uh, well, let's say, um, satin from the from the finish that I think of the skin. Uh-huh. So uh, I'm trying to make it, for example, not as uh, contrasted or not as sharp as I would do it on a non-metal, but still sharper as I would do it on a leather or on, on, on cloth. So it's something actually we... we we spoke very briefly about when we, we spoke on Skype the other day about how different um, different paints have that different finish. Yeah. And you can, for, so say, you, you can do a miniature with a wide range of different paints covering the miniature, but just to suit the texture that you're trying to create. Yeah. It's a combination of, like, the properties of the color and the uh, intensity of the, the highlight that you're painting. Um, so... It's nice to have, for example, satin colors. For for me, I like to have satin colors in the in the mid shadow area because they reflect some light, uh, the light quite nicely and give a bit of sparkle without changing the uh, overall impression of the light that I've painted on the figure. Mm-hmm. Um, but also the the level of contrast that uh, that you paint, for example, now with the with the strong white reflex here, that level will uh, determine of uh, what people see this material as. It's all flat, but you will see it and you're like, ah, okay, that's this semi-glossy skin. Have you, um, I, I know you guys have the Scale 75 paints here. Have you ever used, like, the, the White Alchemy as as your your highest point of light? I've, I've seen a couple of, of miniatures that have been painted where people have mixed in the Scale 75 uh, White Alchemy for the highest light. Um, to, to, to really make it shine, you know, as if it's like a, a strong light painting on it. Yeah. The the problem is uh, if you add the the, um, the white alchemy for people that know it, the white alchemy is a bit like the, the metal medium that you also have in, in um, uh, from model color, for example. It's just pure metallic pigments uh-huh. uh, without any color or tint. So right. um, that could be interesting. And... I would consider using it for maybe something like bone or something. Okay. Or or if you paint um, shells in the sea, something like that. Yeah. Could be interesting for that, that special shine. But um, I think if when you use metal pigments, the um, the the danger is that if the light on the show, for example, is not perfect, you always have a kind of it will always change the look because it reflects so differently. Got you. That's why I also like to to keep the highlights uh, rather flat and matte compared to the uh, to the shadows because I want my highlights to stay on the very same spot no matter where I are where I, where I present my figure. We see here on the this part of the the face we have the like it's like a skull mask just on the top and oh you he's got a little piggy nose <laughs> that is so cute. <laughs> He has also some teeth and lips, and uh, actually it's very nice and detailed. So we will just use some tank brown to cover teeth and lips, and also the inner part of the mouth. And yeah, it's like a, a skull nose, where you have to make sure to not paint that thing. <laughs> and we will uh, also... You kind of want to paint it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like the Porco Rosso of... Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love that movie. So, uh, just some tank brown here in the uh, in the very recess here on the. the it's neck. interesting that you've you've done um, done brown for the mouth. Um, I think some people might might go towards doing pure black, but that that could possibly be too dark. Yeah. Would you say it? It's a little dark. Plus. Um, because I left the uh, black in there before and just added a thin layer of the dark brown, mm-hmm. it will still be darker brown than, for example, on the lips. You can see on the lips the um, the um, pink or the, the flesh tone is still shining through a bit and that, therefore it's quite a bit more the, brown, actually. This comes back to what we were saying before about how you, you need to get used to, um, to try and get used to the, the translucent nature of acrylic paint. Yeah. Um, how... how Painting one color over a different, uh, over like say three different colors, you get yeah. a different effect. 
And it's very important if when you change uh, the uh, the colors on a model with glazes on a larger scale and just work on larger surfaces with different glazes, it's really it's a very nice uh, effect and advantage of acrylic color that it overlaps uh, and the color changes mm -hmm. within the different over overlapping tones. For metals, for example, it's very good to have to work with brown and blue glazes to create a very lifelike metal. And where it overlaps, for example, if you use tank brown, it's uh, dark sea blue. <laughs> surprise, <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> but if you use those two, where they um, where they overlap strongly, they will almost end up in a neutral, uh, desaturated purple. And in other parts, you have a more vibrant red from the tank brown and a more blue on the other side. Mm. Actually, I have a question for you. Have Vallejo ever contacted you about possible sponsorship? Maybe having a, a little Ben Comet's face on the on the side of some tank brown? Or it's, it's it's sadly not, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. If you're out there, Vallejo. <laughs> very... <laughs> uh, if you want my face. Um, it's quite important to pick out the, the chin here with a strong highlight. Also, the um, side of the... The cheekbone here. Uh huh. Because that will also stand out quite a bit in the. See, it seems like because that's quite a strong, strong highlight, and and to look at it when it's wet, I'd instantly think, oh my god, I've put on too much. But then, as it starts to dry, you can see the other colors below shining through. And I uh, even go a bit brighter here. The small dot. Also there. Something um, I saw an interview of um, Shoshi mm -hmm. um, when she painting, and she was saying that with white, it was something she'd only just recently learned, was that with white, uh, pure white, is just to have that very tiny dot, because often white as a as a, a, a having pure white like more lines of it can look a bit odd. It's not doesn't look as natural. Yeah. And you have to be very careful with using pure white. Um, funny thing is, it was really at, at some point in miniature painting, if you use pure white and black, people go like, what? You never use pure white and pure black on a miniature. That's way too strong. It's so <laughs> un, 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 unnatural. Um, but if you just use it in the right spot, it, it can really bring your contrast up a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, for years, I've been just painting without white and, and and black, and then I added white to my palette, and I was like, "Oh, now that is the contrast I've been looking for." So uh, this is the contrast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, um, with the light uh, skin color, I also dotted in the teeth, just being very careful um, not to to paint them all over just like dotting in and just i was about to say doing little dots because i think you you could go crazy trying to do the teeth yeah. as detailed you know yeah. and as i think at this scale i think you know when you when you see it it's the nice thing is that actually the fangs are sculpted a bit bigger so it's easy to do small dots on there uh -huh. and make them stand out a bit more um the um uh, you might wonder this is a zero uh, not a zero. This is uh, this is even a one, and with the, the tip of a good brush, you can paint teeth of a twenty-eight mil figure with a one. Um, I was actually going to to mention like something I've noticed from watching your videos is that you tend to favor a zero over a one. Is that fair to say? Mm, actually, it's, <laughs> it's it's always been kind of like a lottery. It's what I what I got in my box. Got you. Okay. <laughs> so. I actually, if the tip is good, I don't don't really care um, the the size of the brush. Um, I like ones and uh, zeros as well because they still hold enough uh, paint. Um, yeah, I, I I remember in the the beginning of of my painting journey, the first like the first couple of months trying to paint a face and having the the tiny three double zero synthetic brush, <laughs> which is which is a fantastic tool. I highly recommend it um, to, to, to get that, that tiny dot. I'd, I'd often find, because in the beginning I was quite nervous, so often I'd load my brush up and then I'd hold the miniature and I wouldn't quite have planned where 
I'm going to paint. So I'm <laughs> sitting there looking at the miniature, yeah. holding it, turning it in the light. Right, okay, this is where I'm going to put the paint. And then when I eventually got the brush towards my hand, oh, wait, it's totally dry. Um, and then I'd have to stop, rinse, repeat the whole process again. Yeah. So. Just choosing your brush uh, that also fits your painting style is quite important. I recently discovered the uh, the um, Da Vinci Maestro series of brushes, and they're really nice. I uh, for the very fine detail. Mm -hmm. I have a. Uh, I think it's it's a ten zero. Wow. Okay. But uh, they measure their sizes differently. Uh, but the tip oh, here okay. uh, is is very very nice. So uh, that. Could come in. Handy. I was going to say, what, as soon as you said 10 0, I just imagined like that one strand <laughs> yeah. coming out of the brush. Um. No, so it's, it's not really that, that like a, like a, a, a Winsor Newton 10 0 would be, but uh, the, uh, regarding the, the quality of the, the tip there, I would say they're as good as the Winsor Newton. So I was quite surprised by that. And so, so you're just using some of the, the blue there to, for, the, for the deepest, deepest yeah. shadow. Again, blue uh, with a bit of uh, tank brown in there, just to, to get it in. Would you say it's important, like say you've got the, the blue and the tank brown, it's important like you, you're using it with the base tone, you've used it say like to, to, for the shadows in the mouth, it's important to have a, a color in your mix that kind of ties everything together? Um, I think it helps to create a believable atmosphere if you do that, because it somehow reminds the eye of a natural light and shadow situation because you have a colored light source uh -huh. um, even the sun or the your uh, light bulb is cover a uh, colored light actually so yeah. uh, no just thinking about that is I think quite quite an eye-opener that every color that uh, every light that we see actually I got a color it influences the color so for ages I was painting using just a regular light bulb yeah and like yeah the bright yellow ones um and then when you you finally get a daylight bulb it's like wow it's almost it's almost like it's it's almost blue yeah um and there are cold even colder lights out there which are really blue but when you if you've only ever used a regular bulb and f for, for me the first time i saw a daylight bulb so yeah, I was like, oh my god wow uh, <laughs> is, this, is this right <laughs> is, is, is this how it should be um but the, but it, it makes so much difference oh and i I, th I think as well to mention that I only ever use one but one bulb when yeah. painting, um, and it's actually something Michael said is to try and, if possible, have two. If but I mean, if possible, have something like one of those those tri tube, yeah, very big uh, lights. But yeah, because otherwise you create false contrast on your miniature, yeah, because you 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 see shadows with, like natural shadows when really you want it to be as illuminated as possible. So so you create the shadows with with your paint. Yeah. Also, it's it's good to see more than any other person that would look on your figures like on a show for example mm -hmm. you know it's always good to have better light than the judges because you definitely see more than the others and that would also make you your painting be uh, much more perfect which is exactly what the painting Buddha academy is all about <laughs> so yeah i think um so far, so good for like the very pale skin here. Mm -hmm. uh, I would continue with the shadows here and the highlights on the on the back off cam because, again, it's just the very same. And uh, you might wonder about that large black lump of uh, paint, but uh, all that will be covered later. Uh huh. Um, so we'll be back to paint the little uh, crab-like hand. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's it's a nice little uh, chaos bit actually with with some interesting texture, and we will try to create a, a like a glossy look with some uh, sharp reflexes, but without using any glossy paint. So like it looks like it's wet or yeah, slimy yeah, or like sp sparkling a bit, uh, a bit alien like. So um, also some some purple black tones in there. But we'll do that once I've uh, finished this skin part. And whilst we take a break, if you uh, if you feel that Ben should paint him with a pink piggy nose, <laughs> please please uh, please get in contact <laughs> and let us know because yeah. I I feel we should make it happen. But yeah. I, I don't think I can get Ben to do it on my own. So. Uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> 